What's going on, Hashtag Nation? Uh, so we did a, a live q and It was uh, this last Friday. It, you, you all right there? I'm good. What? I'm good. Okay. It's... Paul, just read the question. These people are waiting for us. Please read. <laughs> Who do you think would have a greater chance for the Bills to draft? Chase Claypool, Jonathan Taylor, or Kyle Duggar? Well, and I'm not, I I definitely could be convinced to draft the workout warrior. Like, I am certainly not immune to the, you know, Niall Davis, uh, <laughs> Niall Davis combine performance. Uh, you know, I you could convince me to take the workout warrior. Like, I, there's, I, I could justify a lot on tape from a workout. I'm not going to lie about that. It's tough for me to be objective sometimes. Okay. So, well. Chase Claypool is a player that you, yeah, I could be I could be convinced. Well, let's try to let's try to mix it up to take Chase Claypool. Let's try to mix it up as far as this episode goes. So there's three guys on the board. So let's do this. Let's try to mix it up a little bit. We got three players. We got Kyle Duggar. We got Chase Claypool, and we have Jonathan Taylor. Okay, we already know which one you have. Okay, and that yeah. you're you're in support of. Okay, yeah. So you take him. I will take. I will take Kyle Duggar. Okay, so what we're going to do for Chase Claypool is we'll flip a coin. I got one right here. Uh, you say why the Bills should, and I'll say why the Bills shouldn't. Yeah, I'm done okay, with that. Let's so go. We'll, we'll call it heads or tails. So call it near. Tails. And you win. So for Chase Claypool, you want to argue for the Bills taking him or against? Uh, well, he's a wide receiver from Notre Dame. Uh, so I think it would hurt your soul to have to defend the bills taking him hey so i love I, jeff I'm defer i love jeff samarja so shut up <laughs> how right. you doing i'm deferring i'll I'm say deferring. Yeah. i'll say why they should take him yeah okay fine. um so i, I let, let's start with uh obviously the elephant in the room we've already done an episode on him so i don't know if we're going to spend too much time if you want to go check those out they'll be in the hashtag sports videos it should be one of the recent ones but jonathan taylor um i think it's interesting the most interesting thing about taylor duggar and um taylor duggar and, and claypool is the fact that i think they're all selections of different rounds I think they're, we're not talking about all if the Buffalo Bills had a first round pick and all three of those guys are on the board, which one do you take? Right. Uh, I think it's it's more of you know the, two of the two or maybe even three of those guys. I know it's a stretch, but three of those guys might be available for the Bills picks. Mm -hmm. um, as I think Claypool is projected as a third or a fourth, and you're talking right. about Duggar projected as a second or a third, and you're talking about Taylor. If teams still draft wide uh, running backs in the first round, still, <laughs> I'm not sure. Right. That could be that could be one of those things that manifests. So, you know, really quick, what is what is the th thing that you think Taylor brings to the board, and where do the Bills pick him? Uh, for Taylor, so yeah. why do I think Taylor's there? So I look at Taylor and I see um, it, it's weird, right? Taylor's a funky one to watch on film because he doesn't really explode. Um, off the film because his first step is the same as his 15th step, right? Uh, but but this is a kid that was a, he was a track star. Like he gets to top speed really fast, but he is not a mover and a shaker. He is a guy who's going to put his foot in the dirt. He's a one cut back. Yeah. He's going to see the vision inside and he's gone. Um, and I, I just in a few games I saw him get caught from behind, um, but it was really not very common. Uh, mm -hmm. So he's a guy that has pull away speed. I'm not sure on his pass catching ability. He didn't really utilize him very much as a receiver. So if I have a weakness, that's kind of where I'm leaning. Yeah. So the, the one thing that gets me. I swear to God, I'm calling you Anna for the rest of the episode. I like Taylor as a player. Um, the, the amount of touches that he got in college, I know it was very Devin Singletary-esque even more, but I, I just don't think that 
uh, that is the type of guy. And I'll, I'll harken back to Dawson Knox. I mean, the Buffalo Bills took Dawson Knox. He was a third or fourth option in that old Miss offense. He was going to be the third or fourth option in the Buffalo Bills offense. So there wasn't much of a transition for him, which is why I think the tran- – the transition that he did have was a successful one, even for a rookie tight end. I mean, he had his drops. We're not going to go into that. But um, I think he, that transition of that role was really good for him. When you want to take Taylor, who is the big man on campus, and you want to make him the secondary back, uh, you know, there may be some plays that he, he rips off in preseason here and there, and, you know, and everyone's kind of looking over at Devin Singletary like, hey, your job might be on the line. I mean, you didn't you didn't do all that stuff for Devin Singletary last year just to replace him. I think so. Uh, just for that fact alone, I mean, if you if you upgrade if you have a chance to upgrade a position, you upgrade a position. Right. I'm not I'm not I'm not speaking against that. I'm just saying, I don't know how he, how he would take that role as if that's the one they issued him and said, listen, we drafted you to be a compliment. You're going to touch the ball 10, 12 times a game, whether receiving or carrying. Get used to that role. And, you know, Devin's the workhorse and this and that. So I don't know from a physical standpoint how much longer he would last in the NFL because of his usage. But as far as the combine tape and how he is and the track star and everything that you mentioned, 100% on that. I mean, he's he's phenomenal in that respect. I just don't know how he would take that the transition of that role. <sighs> And, and Paul, you'll you'll understand this if you if you love connections as far as Swift goes. I mean, you want to talk about Swift? He went to, he went to Georgia, right? Okay. The Buffalo Bills run a hybrid of the New England system, the EP system that was run. Well, who's who's in New England right now? At running back, Sony Michelle, who played at Georgia. So uh, those connections will be made along the lines of of okay, you have this. Georgia wants this particular skill set in their running backs, and this is something that New, New England coveted. Um, you know, so in that respect, now with the Buffalo Bills running a similar type of offense, you're gonna you're gonna figure that Swift will be a guy that may be targeted by the Bills, and and I don't I don't deny that one bit. I mean, it it's interesting to talk about, and it's interesting to speculate about that, but those are a couple connections that you can have and you can run through if you wanted to. Okay, so now the second guy that we come to is uh, Kyle Duggar. And everyone loves that big nickel. I tell you what now, you love that, you, you love that big nickel. I, I, so I'm arguing for him, and, uh, you know, like I said, he, he's a guy that uh, has been mocked in many different places, second, thir- second round, third round, you know, and the like. I, what I love about him is that he brings an element to your defense that has not been there before. Now, everyone knows about the rotational defensive front. Everyone knows about Milano and Edmonds being the athletic linebackers that they are. Everyone knows about, you know, take away Trey and those that safety tandem that's back there. And and now you just – you have Levi Wallace, who's an undrafted free agent. Now you just signed great, uh, Josh, Norman, Josh Norman. So all of that being intertwined, we've said for uh, a couple of years now, this defense minus a couple guys here and there have played together for 33 games. Uh, it's very easy that when you have 33 games of film on anything that you're able to find holes and weaknesses wherever that is. Um, I think it, by the in, by bringing in Duggar, um, you have a guy that can play like almost like a, like a monster role, <laughs> like a 52 monster or a rover where you could put him anywhere, anywhere on the field. He can cover, he can blitz. He, he can he can stop the run. He can do so many different things for your defense that just adds another element to that defense that no one can account for yet because the Bills have not used it yet because they haven't had a freak like Kyle Duggar in there. So for that reason alone, uh, we always talk about the offense having to evolve. you got Stephon Diggs now. You talk about other things that may – we just talked about the running backs that can help broaden the offense uh, of this Brian Dable offense with Josh Allen and make him even a more effective quarterback and make the offense run a little bit more smoother. Duggar does that for your defense. He just brings an element of unpredictability that you could do so many things with him, especially with Frazier McDermott. They would know exactly where to put him in the best situations. Be thrown into a mix. Uh, going from that level of competition to the NFL that scares the hell out of general managers because it's just such a competition difference. So I'm, if the bills are thinking of this in the second and third round, I am out. You want to start talking about Kyle Duggar rounds four, five, six. Sure. I, I'm willing to take that chance. you got the, you got the roster to absorb that kind of a chance. I'm okay with that, but his real contribution is going to be on, on some sort of punt return specialist. Oh, okay. That's interesting. 
I didn't know you were going there with that. <laughs> well, all right. Routing out the uh, the third one in the question. Um, <clears throat> talking about a guy who, he, he, as of late, I think he's been very polarizing in Buffalo, especially. Uh, I mean, pre Stefan Diggs and post Stefan Diggs, he's still been a polarizing guy. That a name that's right. been come up, uh, Chase Claypool. Yep. Um, I mean, you want to talk about, you mentioned it earlier on the episode as far as the combine warrior. Uh, there's a lot of those guys. There's a lot of those guys and a lot of GMs and coaches fall for those guys. And it's, mm-hmm. it's interesting to see that. I think he's more later in the, you know, the third or fourth round, maybe even, I don't know, you could stretch it to the end of the fourth round, but I don't think he's going anywhere else, but, but that, and it's only, I think purely because of the, the deep class that there is. I mean, if you gave me a choice between him and Higgins, I'm taking him. Mm-hmm. Uh, even though some people might call me insane, when you have a guy that comes from Clems- from Clemson and in- self-admitted that he did not run a full route tree, mm-hmm. what are you going to do in the NFL? Like, right. I just that just terrifies me. Um, obviously, you know you can mold him in your image if you want to try if you have that much patience. However, why uh, Claypool probably is more intriguing to the Buffalo Bills now that they have digs is because a, the system is very tough to learn B you know that the Buffalo Bills, at least you and I, you know, the Buffalo Bills need a wide receiver to groom because you got Beasley for two more years, Brown for two more years. You got digs for four. By the time this individual is groomed and maybe Beasley and Dig, uh, Beasley and Brown move on from their contracts, if they happen to go to greener pastures or whatever happens in two years, that's two years that this kid, and not being a first-round pick, not being a second-round pick, being a third or fourth, the pressure's not on him. He's able to develop in this system and then could possibly be you know, a playmaker for you. However, I think the smokescreen of Diggs being drafted for other teams – or digs being traded for will hide the fact that the bills will actually go for a wide out in the draft. Mm-hmm. So yeah. they, they didn't go for anyone last year. They didn't pick a wide out last year. Right. So um, I think, well, they, well, you know, they got Brown and Beasley last year and then they didn't draft any wide receivers. Well, they took, they traded for digs with their first round pick. They're not going to take another wide out. So that's why it's so intriguing for this freak. Um, and, 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 you know, they like that tall lanky type receiver. I mean, we, we talked about David Stills last year. I mean, they ended up, we, we saw the on the embedded series, they were, you know, his phone was blown up off the hook from being right. trying to get, to get a hold of him. So uh, for that reason and that reason alone, I think he's, he's such an intriguing prospect that could, um, that could end up in a Bill's uniform if, if taken in the right round. So here's where I sit on Chase Claypool, right? Uh, I don't love his routes, right? I, I, and after the catch, like he's a, he's, Oh God, what's a good example? He's a guy that's going to catch the ball and just run in a straight line, right? Like he's, he's not a threat after the catch, but he is a threat with the ball in the air, right? He really is a very good go get it guy. Yeah. So if that's really what you're looking for, a 50, 50 catch guy, go ahead. But in this offense, I'm going to say that Josh Allen doesn't throw many 50, 50 balls because the thing's coming in at 75 miles an hour. There's not much 50, 50 to something humming. As it comes, if you can hear the football whistle, there's no 50 50, right? Like, I've heard it many times, Paul. <laughs> there's so few of us. Uh, Are you he, saying that he throws 20 80 balls? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. But in, Claypool brings a lot of interesting talents, but I just don't really foresee him being a target for Buffalo. Uh, Because he kind of breaks the mold of what they're really doing right now, right? They've built a a whole herd of wide receivers that aren't necessarily very big, but are very fast. I'm not saying Chase Claypool isn't fast because he certainly, you know, did fine in the speed department at the NFL Combine, put out 4.42, right? So he's definitely got speed, uh, uh, a 40.5 inch vert. So he's, as I said, he's definitely got speed, but I I just don't love, uh, you can't ask him to run slants, right? I, I just don't love his center of balance on running his routes. I think he's a little cloppy when he runs his routes. Well, that's fair. If, uh, he, if he was, he'd be a first rounder. You know what I mean? Right. Like, that's... Yeah. Yeah. I, I think you're right. Right. Exactly. There's definitely some things to work on here, but he's not a guy that you can get the ball to near the line of scrimmage. And let's be real. That's kind of where this offense really is, mm-hmm. right? They like to get the ball 
pretty close to the line of scrimmage. They like to, the only time that they're really moving off is when Josh is on his second or third read. They really don't push the ball downfield all that much on purpose, although there are plays that are designed for it. Let's be real. When Robert Foster was on the field, everybody knew it was happening. Yeah. There's no decoy when Foster was on the field. Yeah. Everybody knew it was going to happen. I don't think Clay, Chase Claypool really changes that for you if you're the Buffalo Bills. It's kind of a little, little bit more of the same. Bigger target, um, you know, again, a little bit more of a 50-50 guy. But the question is, do your quarterback really throw 50-50 passes? Is that really what this offense is going to give you? Um, I, I, you know, you take a look last year and I, I can't recall many times where uh, a, a jump ball specialist uh, would have would have made that much of a difference. I'm sure there are isolated examples of it, but I, I'm not thinking that this is a priority for them. If he's there in the fourth, sure. If he's there in the fifth, sh- sure. Right. He's yeah. a solid run blocker. He does that pretty good. So that's nice. Yeah. Right. And, and I, I like your point on you need to start looking down the road a little bit. And if you are going to look down the road a little bit, this is probably the draft to do that. Yeah. Um, you know, you got you don't have much longer with Brown and Beasley as they stand. But I'm not loving Chase Claypool. Is, is he a fun guy to, to look at his stats? Sure. But when you watch him, it's uh, he, he kind of muscles out players. And he's not going to be able to do that in the NFL. Okay, so your your thought process is uh, the theory of getting a wide receiver to eventually take the, th- the throne of Beasley and Brown in this offense, they have to be more of the style of Beasley and Brown. Yeah. You're, you're, okay, rather than yeah. someone who's who's not of that style. Like, you're not going to ask Chase Claypool to run the slot like Beasley does. You're not going right. to ask him to. That's why, it was, I mean, just, just as a side note, it was so interesting. When they did put Foster on the field last year, I thought it was to try to draw safety help because you wanted to get Brown open. I mean, it's, right. I mean, he could, he could be a great decoy for you, and that's, that's probably the role that um, – a chase Claypool when in the game would probably serve. Okay, just mm-hmm. run, just run a nine. Just try to take somebody with you because we're going right. to run routes underneath you. But mm-hmm. playing ten on eleven like that, I mean, I, I mean, you th- you think that if he takes two guys with him, I mean, you're playing ten on nine. Hopefully that works out for you. But mm-hmm. um, that's not enough for a sustainable model, I think, uh, no. as far as what they're going for. But I, he is definitely intriguing. He's definitely an intriguing guy. <laughs>